Today's show and the following message are brought to you by Trevitt Hill. Cannabis investors expect big returns from the companies that they invest in. Unfortunately, not all cannabis investments succeed. Trevitt Hill's management team works with investors to help turn around, or in some cases purchase, their underperforming portfolio companies. To learn more, go to trevithill.com. So, CanTrade, what we do is we retroactively work with every state license agency to curate that information, to put that in our database of every state licensed cannabis and hemp business in the country. When a business goes to register on CanTrade, we already know exactly who they are before they even input uh, anything in their name. When a business registers, it automatically links to their account within our database, and then that basically gives them instant access to be able to participate in the markets. It's the MJ Bulls Podcast, a show about raising cannabis capital. I'm Dan Humiston, and on today's show, how this former professional football player is helping licensed cannabis businesses connect with other licensed cannabis businesses to purchase their supplies and their raw materials. Today in the Raising Cannabis Capital series, we are joined by Mark Rostelli, who is the CEO of CanTrade. Mark, welcome to the MJ Bulls podcast. Thank you for having me, Dan. Hey, Mark, it's a reoccurring theme on this show, and I know you've listened to the show before, but so many of our guests got into cannabis or started in the cannabis industry because of an illness or an injury. You're a pro football player. This is part of the business. You had injuries. Is that what got you introduced to cannabis? I mean, ultimately, yes, that's where I ultimately ended up in the cannabis industry. But, you know, I was introduced to cannabis at a much younger age, but wasn't really a smoker. Didn't really participate when I played football, even though I sustained just a insane amount of injuries far through the course when playing football. But it was ultimately a knee injury while I was playing up in Canada for Edmonton that resulted in an ankle injury, which went undiagnosed. That caused my ankle to lock up, which then resulted in a toe injury. What had ultimately happened is I fractured the sesamoid bones on the ball of my foot. So the two most pointless bones in the body had been fractured. One had died. felt like every time I would hit my foot to the ground, it was like I was stepping on tack. And I had to play with that for nearly a year, throwing everything at it, treatment, drugs, whatever it may be. And then once it was finally diagnosed, it took four surgeries over a three-year period just to get it back to something that was functional. I was told I would never run again and, and all those things. I'm running now, but my football career was ended because of that injury. Man, it sounds like you were in a lot of pain during that period of time. Were you using cannabis to cut the pain or was this something you started after that? I mean, oh yeah. So the combination of a lot of things, right? So I'm in tons and tons of pain. My career is basically over. I mean, you're not in a good place mentally. You're not in a good place physically. At one point, you know, I'm looking at a ton of pills that I had to treat all these injuries, which I was normal for my entire career to have all those, but I just needed to make a change. I just realized and said, hey, this isn't healthy. I'm not in a good place. I need to figure out something new. That's when I started exploring cannabis, you know, went and got my medical recommendation and started growing and, you know, using cannabis with some roommates and then growing in my garage and then quickly fell in love with it. And that was seven years ago. And in 2016, you started CanTrade. So let's switch gears and let's talk about CanTrade. Yeah, so seven years ago, I entered the industry. Because during that time, I was sales repping for products, going in and out of stores, kind of learning what the industry was like. One of the things that I pinpointed during that time was how hard it was for dispensaries to get supply, for manufacturers to find their biomass of their products they're going to use, their ingredients they're going to use to make their products. I had had the idea of can trade for a long time, but I, I realized that I didn't myself have the chops to make it happen. So it wasn't until in 2016, I was approached by my current co-founders, which are some tech savvy maniacs. <laughs> and, yeah, and they came to me and they said, Hey, we really like the cannabis space. You know, we love what's going on here. You know, how do we get into it? And right then I said, guys, I'm, I'm happy you came. I know exactly what we need to make. Sat down on a whiteboard and started whiteboarding up can trade. So now CanTrade, it's a B2B platform. Is that how it works? Mostly for businesses and wholesale? 
walk us through how it works. Okay, yeah. So can trade is three major pillars, two of which build on the third. First off, there's the marketplace. But before you can build a marketplace, you have to have the ecosystem, the buyers and sellers, and then you need to have the infrastructure to be able to supply to that marketplace. So that's where the other two major pillars come in, and that's the CRM, so that you can manage not only your accounts, your orders, and what step of the process they're in, but also take your sales team and apply them to how they're managing those accounts and be able to track all of that. And then third is the database. So CanTrade, what we do is we retroactively work with every state license agency to curate that information, to put that in our database of every state licensed cannabis and hemp business in the country. So when a business goes to register on CanTrade, we already know exactly who they are before they even input anything in their name. When a business registers, it automatically links to their account within our database. And then that basically gives them instant access to be able to participate in the markets. They can buy, sell, they can track counts, they can pinpoint new leads and targets, and they can apply their sales teams. All in all, we wanted to make sure that we could instantly verify businesses. And within the cannabis and hemp space, there's a limited number of businesses that can even participate in these markets. It's not necessarily open to everybody. When you register, you've got to be one of those businesses. Otherwise, you can't participate. I want to take a minute to remind all of our listeners about a new podcast produced by MJ Bulls Media. Hemp Barons is a weekly show about the companies, products, and entrepreneurs who are using this amazing plant to create and improve the products we use every day. You can listen to Hemp Barons every Tuesday on Apple iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. So the business model, when somebody makes a transaction on the CanTrade site, do you guys receive a percentage of that or... Do they pay to be on your site? So a little bit of both, but not necessarily the way you laid it out. So within CanTrade, it is free for licensed cannabis businesses to sign on, register, participate in the entire ecosystem of the market. So that means buy, sell. Now, when it comes to the actual sale of product and how CanTrade makes money, we're able to apply a subscription model for non-cannabis businesses and a service fee for any products that are linked up to businesses within our network. Okay. So wrapping that back up, CanTrade is free for licensed cannabis businesses, but businesses outside of the ecosystem that would like to participate have to pay a subscription and a sales fee. Ah, I see. That's a good yeah. idea. Yeah, I like that model. And you have over a thousand businesses right now on CanTrade. And I was just reading, on, like five new companies are signing up every day. So you, you know, this platform is exploding. Up until now, you've pretty much funded this whole thing and bootstrapped it your way through. But now, now you're building out phase two. You're starting to market the product and that's going to take a lot of cash. Are you raising money? Yeah, we just recently started our seed fund raise. And we've been, like you said, bootstrapped to this point. We've really been focused on product market fit and creating the best product prior to really going into a marketing push and a growth and expansion push. Now is the time, time's right. We've established our market and ultimately we're trying to put the feet on the ground and the resources, apply those to where they need to be so we can expand nationally. Yes, because this is one of those... If this is your seed round and you already got it up and running and you've done all the heavy lifting, this is an opportunity for investors to jump in quick before this thing gets oversubscribed. Yeah, definitely. And the really cool part is on my other end is the tech guys. So we haven't had to spend any money on the actual technical application product and building and growing that. A lot of times people are going to dump tons and tons of money in their seed funding into that. But no, we're ready to get growth. Yeah, you're really... You almost passed the seed round. Most companies would be almost at Series A where you are in this in, in the life of your business. So that's, I mean, this is a good opportunity for investors. We've been speaking with Mark Rostelli, the CEO of CanTrade. We'll have all of their information on the MJ Bulls website. Mark, thanks for being on the show today. Excellent. Thank you very much for having me, Dan. I've really enjoyed listening to you know everybody on here, and I'm excited to uh, hear more. Look forward to having you back on again. So good luck. Just a quick reminder that you can become an MJ Bulls member for just $4.99 per month and enjoy exclusive access to companies' pitch decks and the MJ Bulls Cannabis Capital Directory. 
Join today at mjbulls.com. Thanks for listening to the MJ Bulls podcast. To learn more about today's guest or to become a guest, visit our website at mjbulls.com. Today's show was produced by Bumminant Media with original music composed by Jamie Humiston. I'm Dan Humiston, and you've been listening to the MJ Bulls podcast. 